The Laughing Heart. Akira. Your life is your life. Don't let it be clubbed into dank submission. Be on the watch. There are ways out. There is light somewhere. It may not be much light, but it beats the darkness. Sometimes the more often you learn to do it, the more light there will be. Your life is your life. Know it while you have it. You are marvelous. The gods wait. You know, it's funny, I never used to think about the fact about loving myself. I just wasn't that guy. The thing about loving myself came when I hit rock bottom. And I really hit bottom, and it was a desperate attempt to save myself. I really fundamentally believe in the power of commitment and making commitments to yourself. You gotta keep them. And in this desperate moment, I've made this vow to myself. I was at bottom. My company had fallen apart. I lost everything. I was really sick. I was miserable. I was depressed. One morning or one night, it was dark. And I just got in my bed and I'm like, I can't do this anymore. I can't do this anymore. I can't do this anymore. I'm either going to get out of this or die trying. And I walked over to my journal, grabbed my pen, and I wrote. I knew I had to make a vow to myself to get out of this. I didn't know what. And I just sat down and I wrote, it was freehand. I vow to love myself. 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 Where that came from, I had no idea. I still don't. It was a pure primal vow. It came from like a deep place of literally I was trying to save myself. When I realized that, what I'd done, I was like, okay, I don't know how to do that. You gotta figure out, because I made a commitment to myself, and a vow to yourself is a sacred act. You do that, you keep it, and life will change. And I had to figure out how to do it. I knew I had to work on my internal self. 
It wasn't about taking bubble baths. It's an internal thing. It's a mindset. It's a belief. It's a rock solid belief where your thoughts, your feelings, your emotions rise from. If they rise from there, then your life rises from there. I vow to love myself. 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 We're human beings, and fundamentally, we're stuck with the human mind. This monkey brain that runs around on this untamed horse, right? The details differ. The core is the same. And fundamentally, it's fear and love. I had a literal near-death experience, and that's what I experienced. The only things that came up were fear and love, fear and love. And those are the primary motivators. Fear and love, fear and love. Fear and love, fear and love. You can't fight fear. You can't fight darkness. Darkness is the absence of light. So what you do is you work in the light. You bring the light in. And that takes away the darkness. And so that's something I actually really learned trying to save myself. If I worked on the light, it would take care of the rest. And that's love. And that's love. I vow to love myself. 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 yourself a chance and it may be that when you are in this way freed from busy bodiness and being out to improve everything that your own nature will begin to take care of itself because you're not getting in the way of yourself all the time you will begin to find out the great things that you are really happening. The great things that you are really happening. For example, no great genius can explain how he does it. The great things that you are really happening. Yes, he says, I have learned a technique to express myself. Because I had something in me that had to come out. If I were a musician, I had to learn how music is produced. If I want to describe something, I have to learn a language. 
so that others can understand. I need a technique. But then beyond that, I'm afraid I can't tell you how it was that I used that technique to express this mysterious thing I wanted to show you. If we could tell people, we would have schools where we would infallibly train musical geniuses, scientific miracle minds. And there would be so many of them, we, we, we wouldn't know what to do with them. Geniuses would be a dime a dozen. And then we would say, well, these people are, after all, not very ingenious. You know, PhDs, how many of them are there? Because what is fascinating always about genius is the fellow does something we can't understand. He surprises us. The great things that you do are really happening. The great things that you do are really happening. For example, no great genius can explain how he does it. The great things that you do are really happening. But you see, just in the same way, we cannot understand our own brains. Neurology knows relatively little about the brain, which is only to say that the brain is a lot smarter than neurology. Yet there is this, which can perform all these extraordinary intellectual and cultural miracles. We don't know how we do, but we did. We didn't have some campaign to have an improved brain over the monkeys or whatever may be our ancestors. It happened. And all growth, you see, is fundamentally something that happens. But for it to happen, two things are important. And the first is, as I said, you must have the technical ability to express what happens. Secondly, you must get out of your own way. The great things that you do are really happening. The great things that you do are really happening. For example, no great genius can explain how he does it. The great things that you do are really happening.
been free to do whatever I want. To make the shows I want anywhere I want, with whom I want, in any style I want. So I, at first I don't know any other way, and by now I won't have it any other way. Life is good. Why settle for less? pretty nice people do, doing the best they can often under very very difficult conditions i met a lot of very nice people who've done very very bad things that conflict with my deeply held conceptions of justice and sexual equality or acceptable practice or religious views there are a lot of gray areas in travel but i think that on balance the world is filled with people doing the best they can you know as best they can, you know. Be humble. Be grateful. 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 I've been fired many times in my cooking career. I was not a particularly good chef. I had a lot of problems at various points of my career with narcotics. You know, I accepted failure as a chef because I was at various times a bad chef. Or even a bad person. These days if I fail, it's because I tried to do something and did not succeed. Or I just was not able to do what I hoped to do or wanted to do. But I would much rather that. I would much rather fail gloriously than not try. Or not interested in, in telling stories with confidence. Looking to tell them with some style and originality. And some creativity.
mind what happens, not. I don't care what happens. I don't care is. It's dismissive. It's a loving indifference, a benevolent indifference, as Francis used to say. It's not an indifference that is cold. Because awareness is not an aloof, separate witness of experience locked up in an ivory tower of indifference. It is intimately one with all experience, so its intimacy is its loving aspect. It doesn't know the meaning of the word resistance or rejection, so it is intimately one with and at the same time free of all experience. So it is both loving and indifferent. So it is both loving and indifferent. So it is not a cold indifference. Is it is it loving indifference being indifference being indifference being indifference being indifference loving indifference we're speaking about awareness loving indifference there is a meaning to the words true and false right and wrong loving indifference we're speaking about awareness loving indifference the qualities that are inherent in our true nature. We're speaking now about awareness. 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 If we talk about mind, that's a different matter. Because mind's experience is always divided into polarities. Good and bad, right and wrong, true and false. And at the level of mind, those categories are valid. They don't pertain to consciousness. Consciousness doesn't know the difference between good and bad. There is no good and bad or right or wrong. But when consciousness assumes the form of mind, it divides itself into two. And at that level, there are differences. There are distinctions. And there is a meaning to the words. Something indifferent. We're speaking about awareness. There is a meaning to the words true and false, right and wrong. Nothing indifferent. We're speaking about awareness. Nothing indifferent. The qualities that are inherent in our true nature. So in terms of ethics, what is right and what is wrong? I would suggest what is right at the level of the mind is behavior that expresses the qualities that are inherent in our true nature. Another name for awareness is love. So behavior that is loving is an expression of the inherent quality of our true nature. The inherent quality of our true nature. Nothing indifferent. We're speaking about awareness. Nothing indifferent. There is a meaning to the words true and false, right and wrong. Nothing indifferent. We're speaking about awareness. Nothing indifferent. The qualities that are inherent in our true nature, cruel or unkind, unjust, unloving behavior, are behaviors that, whilst they come originally from awareness, there's nowhere else they could come from. They are filtered through the belief in separation, and as they are filtered through separation, they are perverted. is love distorted 
by the sense of separation. So hatred, for instance, is love or distorted by the sense of separation. does good apply to the worst of losses, the death of a loved one? It's easy to think that there's nothing good in death. But then I remember the people I have lost throughout my life. The memories of them, the experiences of fun, their unique personalities and everything they gave me, not only in their life, but in their death what their life taught me and what their death taught me. The mark they had left on me. And I realized there is good. Even in death, there is good. Even in death, there is good, there is good. Even in death, there is good. First of all, I was lucky enough to have had that person in my life, even if it was only for a short time. Too short a time. At least I got that. Those precious moments, those unforgettable memories. At least I got those and got to experience those times to know the beauty of their personality, their attitude, their outlook on the world. They were all unique and I am thankful for the opportunity I had to interact with them. Now comes death. Death is horrible, death is wretched, and death is cruel. And death isn't fair. And I don't know why the best people seem to be taken from us first. Death is also inescapable. There is no way out. No one gets out alive. Death is part of life. Like the contrast between the darkness and the light. Without death, there is no life. There is good. Even in death. There is good. There is good. Even in death. There is good. And the people that I have lost, they taught me that. They taught me how precious life is, how blessed we are to have every day, to learn, to grow, to laugh, to live, to live, to live every day with purpose and passion, to wake up in the morning and be thankful, thankful for that morning, thankful for that opportunity to go into the world and live, live for them, for those that don't have the opportunity for those who were stolen away by death's cruel hand. For them, I will live. I will revere their memory and I will live. I will live. There is good. Even in death, there is good, there is good. Even in death, there is good, there is good. Even in death, there is good.
let us mourn no more. Let us remember, but let us not dwell. Instead, let us laugh and love and let us embrace and venerate everything that life is and every opportunity it gives us. Let us live for those who live no more. Let us live to honor them.
which had a serious purpose at the end, but the thing was to get to that end. Success or whatever it is, or maybe heaven, after you're dead. But we missed the point the whole way along. It was a musical thing and you were supposed to sing or to dance while the music was being played. Music, as an art form, is essentially playful. 